Okay, sir. Okay. Then we'll sell it. What else do I think? You want to sell it? Some books. So, uh, we are uh, grateful to Netpantra for giving this opportunity uh, for a spiritual interaction with, uh, the, with the, your employees. And I would say that we are all fortunate to have uh, both the Swamis here today, a very rare occasion. And, uh, uh, what I am requesting Swami is that we have, you know, a small presentation followed by more of interaction with the, you know, employees. So that whatever the questions they have in mind on spirituality matters, you know, they can ask Swami and get a good answer. Right? So let me very quickly uh, introduce uh, both the Swamis to you. Uh, we have with us Bhakti Nisqam Santap Maharaj. Uh, he's a gra he graduated in mechanical engineering and holds a PhD degree from IIT uh, Kharagpur. Then uh, he, he studied in, uh, on fluid and thermal sciences in the year 2003. He obtained his PhD on coastal hydrodynamics from Ocean Engineering Department of Indian Institute of Technology Kharagpur in the year 2008. Worked as an invited scientist in Korean Ocean Research and Development Center from May 2007 to May 2008. He has published numerous technical papers in international, national journals and conferences. During his PhD, he met his spiritual master, His Divine Grace, Srila Bhakti Swarupa Damodar Koswani Maharaj, who is Dr. T.D. Singh. He was another great scientist. And he thereby became inspired to carry out his future works on the most fundamental topics in science such so as origin of matter and life, origin of universe and consciousness in the year 2011. He had received the Tridani Sanyas. Tridani, I'm sorry. Tridani Sanyas initiation from Sri Bhakti Nirmal Acharya Maharaj, the dearmost disciple and successor of Srila Bhakti Sundar Govinda Dev Goswami Maharaj. He is now serving actively in Sri Chaitanya Saraswat Institute under the able and expert guidance of his Siksha Gurudev, Chipad Bhakti Mahadhav Puri Maharaj to carry forward the vision and direction which he has obtained from his spiritual master, his divine grace, Sri Bhakti Swaroop Damodar Goswami Maharaj. So this is the brief introduction of uh, Maharaj and uh, we have also with us Bhakti Vidya Muni Maharaj. Muni Maharaj is a disciple of Sripad Bhakti Swarup Damodar Swami and Sripad Bhakti Madhav Puri Maharaj. He is a PhD from IIT Kharagpur in Chemical Engineering. Due to the pioneering work of his spiritual master in the field of origin and nature of life and matter and their desire, he is engaged in the important work of synthesis of science and religion for lasting peace, knowledge and happiness. So our general perception is that, you know, spiritual people are not associated with science. But here we have in front of you two persons who are very highly qualified, PhD from very reputed institutes and doing spiritual pursuit. So and they are the right people for you to answer your queries, whatever you have mind after the presentation. Right? So I request now uh, <coughs> Santa Maharaj to kindly have a Thank you very much. Uh, the organization name is Net Tantra. Net Tantra. So we thank uh, the organization Net Tantra for giving us this opportunity to interact uh, with all of you and share our humble realization. So first I would like to offer my prayers to my Divine Masters. Oma Jnana Timirandhasya Jnana Nandana Salakaya Chakshur Nulikam Jena Pasme Sri Guru Venamaha 
नमो विष्णु कादाय कृष्ण कृष्णाय भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति सर्गम दर स्वामी जिनामी नमो सर्वभक्त मन मणिपुर भवैच प्रभुपाद लक्षवाणी प्रचार निरतायते जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर शिव सात श्री गौर भक्त बिंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम राम हरे हरे सो टुडे वी वांट टू प्रेजेंट समथिंग ऑन द नेचर ऑफ लाइफ एंड द ओरिजिन ऑफ लाइफ यू ऑल हैव स्टडीड वेरियस डिग्रीज इन फील्ड ऑफ साइंस एंड स्पेशली यू आर ऑल फ्रॉम कंप्यूटर साइंस बैकग्राउंड मोस्ट ऑफ यू सो देयर इज अ नोशन दैट इज गोइंग ऑन इन द वर्ल्ड that in future we can make machines extremely complex so that there is no difference between life and the machines that's what the basic idea which is circulated among the common people but uh, most of you or those common people they are not aware there is a substantial difference between the organism and machines so that's i am going to briefly highlight today and science somehow tells you that life originated from non life there were some chemicals essential chemicals were there and somehow they come together and first life manifested so basically life is a product of accidents there is no difference between the matter in front of you a bottle of uh, water is there in front of you or a acid bottle or a machine and yourself that's what idea of science is it is a simple uh, substance of matter and you are a complex substance of matter so if you do some reactions with the uh, machines or a moderate person basically morally no difference as far as basic uh, consideration or assumption of science is concerned with after all it is matter so is that assumption is correct or not or are we studying really addressing the real concept of life in our study even in biology so that's uh, i'm going to you know highlight today why impersonal analysis of life with the simplistic tools of physical sciences are not appropriate to understand life and its origin they are my spiritual masters sila bhakti sur tamodar maharaj he is sila bhakti sur tamodar maharaj and uh, uh, you can see you have a pointer no you don't have any pointer so sila bhakti mal puri maharaj both are scientists actually sila bhakti sur tamodar maharaj he was doing his postdoc at in usa you know professor miller stanley miller miller will experiment you must have heard so miller has produced some basic uh, so called building blocks of life some amino acids and sugar all those things and he claimed that in future i produce all the bio molecules that are necessary for the life and then i will synthesize life with the laboratory my guru mahal was there and he asked professor miller you are asking for research funds for producing the molecules if i supply you all the molecules can you produce life with the laboratory that's so that i would say if you would be surprised you are asking funds for producing molecules then you want to produce life but if you supplied all those molecules in fact those all molecules are there in the living cell you take those molecules and if you can produce the life but that is not the way of producing life he has understood that but so what he received himself or the world by this notion that in future i will produce life in the laboratory there was a great nobel prize winner george ward he has uh, you know done lot of research on uh, and uh, prominent works he met our shiksha guru uh, dr michael marchetti sila bhakti madhu puri maharaj and he was saying that scientists say how life originated from non life i don't know but somehow it originated that's what he was saying so our scripture must have told him suppose you are always telling that life has come from non life why not you consider the opposite that non life came from life you are living your nail is growing your hair is growing a tiny seed is producing the healthy tree so a lot of mass is coming from life why not you consider that he given his beginning card to him after few days he wrote back dr marchetti what you are saying is correct it's actually matter which is coming from life and he acknowledged in the public is a not only statement but it is such papers in published and he told that india is the guiding principle for the world as far as understanding the life and its origin is concerned so india talks about the mind is the subtle matter and the gross matter and these topics india can guide the rest so now we are 
looking down at our own tradition and our own culture, thinking that science is very advanced and it can give us guidance. But as far as modern science is concerned, it is not giving you any understanding about your own self. There is no theory of happiness, unhappiness, peace, love, affection, frustration. All these things are qualities of life, right? So experience that. But those entities that we study in science, like atoms, molecules, electron, proton, neutron, quartz, all these things, hydrogen atom, carbon atom, they don't have these qualities. But qualities that you experience as a person, or all living entities have, those qualities are not coming from them. They are only having the quality of charge, mass, volume, all these things. So, somehow science has assumed biology is nothing but physics and chemistry, a combination of physics and chemistry. So, in this talk, we will critically examine the validity of this assumption. So, modern science assumes that same law of logic applies to mechanical, chemical, and biological system. Here is a bicycle, and you have chemical system and a blade of grass, that is biological system. So there is an ontology of mechanical system, you see a bicycle is there, it has all the parts there. So separable independent parts, there is a seat, there is a gear, there is the uh, all these parts chain and handle all those things. There is the same thing where it is attached to the system, if you detach it, the identity is, you know, maintained itself. They have their own independent identity and parts are related externally, means the external force is connecting thing. There is a strong force, weak force, electromagnetic force. These are forces which are connecting them as in a system, in a mechanical system. And parts retain the same identity when connected within and isolated from the system. External forces act as the unity principle. And follow a linear logic. You start from a point, assemble it, and get the end point. So it's a linear you know, process it follows. Ontology of mechanical system does not allow the machines to produce biology. So you can make a complex machine, but machine will not produce babies. How much complex a robot may be? Robot will not produce robot babies. The laptop will not produce laptop babies. Machines don't have that quality, but life, they produce their own kind. Bacteria, dog, cat, everybody, they produce their own kind. So that capacity, you cannot provide to the machine how much complex machine you can make, how many oxygen bolt, how many forces you attach, how many material, mechanical material you attach, it will not get that point. Second thing is that part and whole system are not an outcome of organic development. You see how our body developed. Because a single cell zygote, that cell divided two cells, four cells, eight cells, and whole system came up from that. But you cannot get that type of thing a ring was there, or a pedal was there, or a seat was there, and they develop into a whole bicycle. That type of thing you will not find in the machines. How much complex you make it? So, can a mechanical insect extract the nectar from a mechanically designed flower? You can make complex flower, very complex flower, and complex insect, imitated, imitating insects. We have now box, mechanical box, which can steal your information from the computer. But they cannot do the function of a biological entity. So this is one of the important thing. And ontology of chemical systems, parts of the chemical system are both independent as well as dependent. I mean, in when they are inside the chemical system, they show certain kind of characteristics, like sodium chloride, and then to separate them, they show different properties. That is not the case in the case of mechanical system. So, parts cannot be understood without its relationship in another part. There is a chemical affinity. Something is acidic, something is basic. The chemical affinity is there. That type of relational thing you don't find in mechanical system. External relations are formed due to intrinsic properties of individual parts of the chemical reaction. Chemical bonds act as unity principle. It denotes the you know, different parts of the chemical system. It also follows a linear process pathway. You know the chemical pathway, you have a starting point and there is an end product. You follow that pathway and you get the end product. You start from chemical and end up with chemicals. Ontological distinction between mechanical and chemical systems. So here the parts they display the same property when detached from the system in the case of mechanical and chemical system they have different inner properties. Ontology of a chemical system does not allow the chemicals to produce biology. We have an equation of photosynthesis, right? 
we are very proud of that equation. But can we use that photosynthesis equation to produce a blade of grass in the laboratory? Can any scientist produce a blade of grass by using the equation of photosynthesis? We say we, have, we know the equation of photosynthesis. But that is of no use. That's why our director, Srila Bhakti Madhav Puri Mahalas, told, with all our science, all the scientists in the world together cannot make a single blade of grass. So one blade of grass is challenging the whole scientific community. Newton's here, Kant long back told, there will never be a Newton for a blade of grass. I mean, Newtonian mechanics will never able to understand a blade of grass. So chemical reactions only produce chemicals, not life. Arts and whole system are not an outcome of organic development. Ontology of combined mechanical and chemical systems also does not allow it to produce biology. You have a very complex mechanical car and you put very complex chemical you know, processes in that. By feeding it grass <laughs> or somehow transforming grass into milk, that process it cannot execute, that mechanical chemical car. That will not happen. Ontology of biological systems. There are no parts. In biological system there are no parts. Participants are members of the dynamic world. Means there are there is a what you can say they are participants. They are not like a part that you you know detach. A DNA is only DNA when inside the cell. You cannot say it's a nose and is lying on the road. Nose is only a nose when it in relation to the body, a particular function. So participants of the biological system exhibit an internal teleological relation. Teleology means there is a purpose. Why there is nose? Why there is eye? That is very much uh, but intrinsic to the that body, and it, it it appears by organic developmental process for exhibiting that particular objective. Participants do not possess isolated identities. Participants are identified only in their mutual relations. Sentients act as a unity principle in mechanical system. There is external process which is acting as a unity principle, and chemical system there is chemical bonding. But your whole body is connected. And like everything is connected. It's not connected just by flesh or bones, but there is something that makes you stand and do the normal activity that you are executing that is known as consciousness or sentience. If you are unconscious, you cannot stand, you will fall down. That means consciousness itself is a force. And science has not addressed that by using the law of mechanics or you know chemistry. So life follows a <coughs> circular logic. Mechanical, chemical system they follow linear logic. But life where is the end point and where is the beginning point? Chicken is needed for egg, egg is needed for chicken. You don't have any starting point there. The seed is needed for the plant and plant is needed for the seed. You don't have a uh, starting or end point there. So it follows a circular logic. Life is always coming from life. That is the thing, biogenesis. So that process you not find in chemical and mechanical systems. So what we have studied in science is mass, volume, length, shape, color, melting point, boiling point, density, all these properties, air, acid, base, water, all these things, but these are all matter. We are given so much of time, so much of energy, everything, for producing something that. But we have not studied life, which executes thinking, feeling, and meaning. None of those entities that we are studying in science has these qualities that we see as in biological system, that is thinking, feeling, and meaning. So, there is a scientist called McGure, and he has given a IIT challenge, means integrated information theory. What he has told that when you devise a computer, complex machine, then you can put sensors in that. You can detect n number of different smells. In a computer, you can put more sensors and number of uh, you know, smells that you can detect. And you can precisely locate where that you know, information is stored. The data is collected, where it is stored, you can locate it in the computer. But once an organism has the information, where that is stored in the body, you cannot locate it. Like for example, this parrot has this you know activity what it is doing, you want to edit it. You want to change that activity a little bit. Or you want to eliminate that memory. Can you do that? Which portion of the uh, body you will you know, manipulate so that that information can be edited? There is no such, you know, uh, what you can say, information stored in the locations. So what he says that in the living organism, that information is integrated. And in the case of machines, it is discrete. So internal teleology in living organisms debunks the illusion of consciousness in artificial machines. So machines, they don't have 
thinking, feeling, willing, all those things. And machine may defeat you in a game of chess or uh, cards, but machine will not be happy. Who will be happy? The person who owns the machine or the programmer will be happy. But you will be unhappy or happy because the purpose is within you. But machine don't have those things, those feelings. A thermocouple a thermometer, it does not sense heat. It does not feel hot or cold. The only mechanical reading is here. But you feel that things is hot, it's cold, all those things, experiences. So this very important difference I want to highlight that most of our you know, studies in science we are only focused on matter, on gadgets. We want to solve the problem of life by gadgets, you know, by machines, by chemicals, by chemical pills. But we are living entities. We have to look for the solution of the living reality. We have not studied anything about life. Science has not studied scientists who have discovered all these laws and theories of these things. <coughs> so we have given whole attention on something that but we are living. So what our scriptures are saying that we have to focus on living reality, solution in the living world. See number of the suicide rates are increasing all over the world because people have not addressed how to free ourselves from anxieties. There is no theory on science of happiness, love, affection, all these things are not there by how much research you do on machines and, and chemistry. That will not help you solve these important problems of the life. So we have to study life. When the subject becomes object of its own study, then spiritual life begins. You want to study so many things, but not yourself. After all, you are a living entity. We are you some machine or atoms or molecules? What's your identity? So our modern education is not teaching that. What our modern education is teaching is get some education, learn some language skills, and become a servant of government or a private company. That's the objective of modern education. But in past, in the Guru Kul, what they are teaching? Pathado Brahma Jigyansa. Inquire about yourself. Who are you? Why are you suffering in this world? All these things. So modern scientific research very much focused on to explain everything based on some causality. I don't want to you know tell more time because I want to have some interaction. So I want to give one statement of this scientist, Ernest Meyer, the 20th century's leading evolutionary biologist. What he says, it is a little difficult to understand why the machine concept of organism could have had such long-lasting popularity. After all, no machine has ever built itself, replicated itself, programmed itself, or been able to produce its own energy. The similarity between an organism and machine is extremely superficial. So what we are doing, a, a, a elephant, we are producing a, a mechanical or chemical in identity by our egoistic explanation of the reality. Because we have not seen the whole elephant. We are seeing only a small portion of the reality. And we are trying to relate it without its you know, context of what greater context it belongs to. And then we are touching the belly of the elephant and we are making it interpretation. This is the wall. And the tail we are touching and saying it is rope. The trunk we are touching is the snake. And the leg <coughs> we are saying is pillar. So we are constructing like a wall is there. How the wall is came, then we will say as a scientist breaking the wall, it is made up of brick, it is made up of cement, it is made up of this, material scores. We are producing the material scores in science. Telling these are materials up there. A leaf we will break into various parts and see it is made up of atom molecule, all these things. But also we are saying there are forces are involved. These forces, here, that force that is involved in the wall, this, these are adhesive force, this force, that force, so many forces are there involved. But what we are not saying is a, a person's mind is involved behind organization of those material and those forces so that it will form the wall. And there is a purpose, there is a final purpose. So these are the four causes that Aristotle explained. Science is discussing only material and efficient force, that is the physical sciences. But physical sciences ignore mind and the purpose. What purpose this class is made? That science cannot tell by its own research. Science can only tell you what material is made up of and how it can be made. But it will not say there is a mind is involved and there is a purpose is involved. That purpose is not coming from our theories. And our Vedanta is talking about another cause that is original cause. Ishwara Parama Krishna Satchitananda Vigraha Anandir Adir Govinda Sarva Karana Karana Causes of all causes. From where all things came. The original cause is also ignored. So, 
Uh, there is a book by our uh, director that is Ideals of Mind was a true reality. You can find it in Amazon. So it discusses all these fundamental problems, how we are trying to study things and what are the defects, how we are trying to impose our ideas on nature. Nature should fit to, fit to our models. But nature, nature is not our slave. It's not slave of our models. The mathematics that we are using, 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. Can it hold good for anything? There is no 1 plus 1. 1 and 1 are identical entities. You don't find two identical entities. One apple and another apple that never become identical. So we are trying to idealize the things which are far from the reality. And thus, our models are always keep on changing and is not producing something that we uh, accept as, you know, true reality in our day-to-day -day life. Science cannot solve the ultimate mystery of nature and that is because in the last analysis, we are a part of the mystery that we are trying to solve. This is a statement of Max Planck. So we are trying to solve everything, but we ourselves are the mystery that we are not addressing. Anyway, so I have not uh, discussed uh, all the details, you know, but I want to say a conclusion, something. You see, there is a flower, lotus flower is there and there is an image. The material world is a perfected reflection of the spiritual world. That's what our scripture is explained. So, when I say a book is there, there is some of our publications that go through. A book is there. In that book, there is paper and there is letters. If I ask you how the book came, and you can say, book came from paper and letters. Is this the real answer? Can book come from paper and letters? What is necessary for the book? What is necessary? For a biology book, for an economics book, for any book, what is necessary? There is a concept of the person is necessary. Author is there. And that we are not telling. We are telling only paper and letters. So we are trying to study the so many materials and forces. But there is a concept in it. This world is coming from the concept of Brahma. And Brahma is getting that concept from Vishnu. So we are trying to, like this mirror image, we can break the, in the mirror, you see a body flying. You can break the mirror into very, very small particles. From that you cannot understand the body. You have to trace back where the bird is flying. By breaking the mirror, you cannot understand the bird there. Bird is not there actually. So, our real self is not in this world. This earth, water, fire, air, ether, mind, all these things. But we are trying to understand ourselves from those things, the reflections. But we are not tracing our real self. So, there is another process is necessary. And that's what Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to tell us. You are sleeping in the lap of Maya and trying to, what you can say, uh, experience so many things like in a dream. In a dream, some people are shouting, tiger is coming, tiger is coming. But when you wake up, there is no tiger. So what you are experiencing in this world is because of your, what you can say, egoistic uh, conception that you have developed. You have developed reality as is, it is your reality. You are the subject and that is the object. But we are not the supreme subject. There is a supreme subject that the supreme is there. And even that for, for that supreme, we are the objects. So we have to try to see from his vision everything. And how you can know his vision. So these are things, epistemology, how we know things from our angle of view and from the God's angle of view. How you can say there is a epistemology like protexo, paroxo, aparoxo, adoxo, aparakrita, different levels of knowing. So these things our saints have discussed. So if you want to know all these things, we have to also give some time to our this direction. Don't only spend in machines and chemistry to solve the problem of life. That will not help you. This what is my humble uh, you know, conclusion. That's why I try to conclude with this sloka. Sunvantu visve amruta sutra. Awake, arise. Arise to your self-consciousness that you are a drop of the nectar ocean. Try to realize you are drinking the poison by diving deep into matter. By putting so much of effort into matter, machines and chemistry. Try to see your living reality, living world. There's another reality is there. How you can trace that? And there your fortune is lying. And that towards that direction also you should make some effort. Thank you very much. Any questions or comments?
trying to understand the purpose of this uh, uh, this thing. And uh, you mentioned that the modernization and the difference between modernization and the one that we have in the old days. How how can a person actually find the purpose of this thing? Uh, and with the context of professional environment. Yes, very nice. Actually, anything we need some education or training. If the baby takes birth, if there is no training is given to that baby, if a robot is coming and feeding the food and medicine is supplied, baby can grow. But that baby will not be suitable candidate for the society. So you become a suitable candidate to live in society by first training each other. As you are trained to be become materialist by all this system, you need some help to come out of this illusionary life or experience that you are having at present, and you are suffering it. So everybody wants to live, but they are dying. Everybody wants happiness, but unhappiness is coming. And everybody wants to know, but ignorance is coming. So how to attain the satchitanam? Some some training is necessary to us that are You know, like you know physics by spending some time with those who have some knowledge in physics. You cannot just read some book and you become a physicist. You read the book on brain and you cannot become a brain To experience this inner life also, you have to associate with those who have some experience of that. If you tell a baby it is enough to work, you may not understand that what it is. But it, the process if you see that baby follows, then in due course of time you will understand that there is enough to work. Even though I really not seen by anybody in the world. Understand? Here also same thing. The reality, many reality we not seen. Love, affection, anger, frustration, those on so many subjective things we have not seen that. But they are there. This the their inner life is there. We have not seen that. But you can experience it when you associate with the, so those persons who have that experience. We have understood that I don't have to waste my time on this false identity. Because I'm going to die. My whole presentation the objective was today to make you help understand. On what basis of identity you are giving your whole energy and time is all going to be waste. Next moment you die, what for you work so much hard work? It's a garbage. In Alexander the Great, he has worked so hard and collected so much of wealth. When he met a saint in India, then the saint was looking at his face. Tell him, why are you looking towards my face? You are not afraid of me. Why should I be afraid? No, I can kill anybody. I can many, many big things are afraid of me. And he said that you cannot kill me, you can only kill my body. And he was shocked. Master hearing that. He was shocked. Then he said, What is this soul and all this thing he is talking about? Then he tried to learn about that. And then he got some realization. And what he told, he was having the famous doctors at the time, world's famous doctors were around him. He told, When I will die, put my naked body on the stretcher and put my two empty hands towards the sky. And you doctors carry on your shoulder this my body on the stretcher. And on the road there is garbage box. You put all my so-called wealth in that garbage box. Then these doctors ask him, why should we shall do like that? You are a great man, you are a well-known man. Because everybody must know that you are big doctors, famous doctors of the world, you cannot save me. And I have worked so hard like a fool and collected only garbage. And that garbage you are throwing on the garbage bin around the road. And I am going in empty hand, I have not collected anything for myself. Because I am not this body. I am soul. And this understanding only human can get. Animals cannot get this understanding. Animals anyway, what you are working hard, eating, sleeping, mating and defending, they, anyway they are doing. What is extra you are doing as a human being? Man is a rational animal. Man can think about all these things and can get the solution. Better, you know, lasting solution for his real problems of life. That's why my presentation is just to make you awake. Towards the, you are true reality. Are you saying that we are getting, we are becoming a slave to the machine? Uh, you are trying to solve the problem of life from machines. You think that by producing so many machines, your life will be very comfortable. But it's not happening like that. You see, we have made so much advancement in technology. But still, number of social rates are increasing rather than reducing. The anxiety levels are going high. The conflicts are going high. So our problems are increasing. We previously we were not buying the water. Now we have to buy water. The air also, you know, people are buying somewhere in their dress air. So it's a development or degradation. 
We are not producing by science, you know, rivers, mountains, forests, we are not producing. Even blade of grass, we are not producing. Even a grain of rice, we are not producing. What we are producing is toys, machines, automation. Life, we are not producing. Even a small cell, we cannot produce in the world. Life is always coming from life. Life does not come from non life. But wrongly, we are getting, getting this teaching in our schools and colleges. And we never question that. Somehow. We think that science is all right, science is all good. That is wrong attitude. But if you say something is Gita, show me evidence, show me proof. But this also you see, where you are lying. Science has only covered a very tiny portion of the reality. It has not touched anything about life. But you are giving the reality. What is naivety? <coughs> Any other question? So you all will change your life. Think about this has given you some new thoughts. Or you have heard about these things before. So try to think about good of yourself. How can you do good? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told Narada Bhumi to Vila Manusha Janmaja Janma Sartal Pari Karapalpa. Who have taken birth in the land of Bharat, make your life success and help others to make their life success. So you have to try to dive deep into reality, not stay in the surface. You are trying to break your body into small pieces. I made up a car, had the oxygen. So you are, you are not there. In the dead body also those things are there. Life, what identity you have at present, maybe 50, 60 years back this identity was not there. So you are working very hard for this identity, to maintain this identity. But that will go. So what is your true identity? Work for that. Understand what is your true identity. How can you work from that? There's another world is there. That is, this is Murtyugo, the world of dead. And there is Vaikuntha, another world is there. And devotees are working for that. Our prosperity is there, not there. This world is anyway going. Jabhat means this is going. This is going to go. And you are spending all your energy for what is already decided to go. You are working for that. But devotees are working for something permanent. You may think they are all maybe fools or you know like dull headed or you may think they are not having intelligence and we are working for something concrete but at last you will see what you work for concrete that becomes all like a loose sand you know going away but what devotees are working for which you are thinking that is not concrete that will be concrete <coughs> some concepts like force and this force we don't see by some what to say instruments this force we, we only see effects but we can understand something like force exists uh, by some 
uh, some concepts like understanding. We understand that this is a force going on there. So this is the rational part of uh, scientific, you know, approach, understanding. So not only is there a, uh, like a measurable or observable part in science, but there is a rational part. So science is a rational activity already. But when you come to religion, it has also a rational uh, part. But uh, Mahaprabhu has explained that after rationality, there is Sharanagati also. For example, to understand that there is a mind, that there is intellect, that there is ego, we uh, cannot measure these things in terms of you know, uh, certain lower material objective criteria like how can we express uh, intelligence in terms of units of you know uh, kilograms or length or time we cannot measure like that so intellect as a concept has to be understand uh, has to be explained in terms of uh, trying to understand one thing from another so that is like intellect means to separate like this is this this is this so this type of uh, thing requires something like called rationality. So anyhow, but when Mahaprabhu came, uh, there were already a lot of subjects in India. For example, Nyaya Shastra was there, which is already a rational type of activity. But Mahaprabhu has explained that merely Nyaya or playing in logic, Tarka, will not be sufficient. You require Sharanagati. And after Sharanagati, Sharanagati is possible when you hear from those who have understood those subjects in their talking about things, about these concepts of Atma and about God, destiny, these questions who have understood. If you hear from them, then you also can enter into those topics. So this is our Guru Parampara. So generally, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teachings you are interested, they are tenfold. Dashamul Tattva in Sanskrit language. So first is the Amnaya Dharavahika Parampara, means the method of proofs. For anything, you require proofs. So the proofs here is in the coming in the form of the statements of the uh, Guru Parampara. What Guru Parampara will reveal about those higher topics are the proofs. And then the next nine are Pramaya Tattvas. Like once you understand the method of proofs, Pramanas, then what is to be uh, understood in terms of those Pramanas are called Pramayas. You have uh, uh, some uh, method of proofs, you know, like assume this and then this, 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 then you come to conclusion. So in uh, Vedanta also, there is Shabda Brahma means the statements of the higher uh, realized sages. And the other proofs like induction or uh, direct exception, they can be also proofs, but only if they are uh, in correspondence with the statements of the uh, Shabda Brahma. Means when you talk about topics like uh, concept of soul, concept of God, so you have to have some uh, such kind of you know praman which is based upon authoritative understanding. So what are those uh, next nine topics which are uh, being proven through that system of Dharavahi Guru Parampara is that the highest topic is known as the Sri Krishna is the Paramatar. Lord Krishna is the supreme truth. This Mahaprabhu's teachings. Then the next is that this Lord Krishna is not alone, but he is with his potencies. Sarva Shakti Sampanya, all potencies. Like we say, there is uh, Antaranga Shakti, Bahiranga Shakti, and there, there is also Tathashtra Shakti. These are topics have been originally it is called Shorup Shakti, and then further classifications are coming from there. Then, not only is he uh, Sarva Shakti Man, but he is the emporium of all Brussels. Krishna knows uh, what is the love in the heart of his devotees. 
he, he can taste that. That's why he's known as Akhila Rasamrita Samut. Is the emporium. All tastes are to be found in his in him. Then all living entities are the differentiated part and parcel of Hari. Between you and him, there is the difference. That he, you are dependent upon the Lord, we are all dependent upon the Lord, and we are his part and parcel, and we are distinct from him, and yet we are his distinct part and parcel. Means we have a connection with him, we have a sambandha with him, that was it, it means. Means the living entities are vivinna amshita. Vivinna is a sensitive term for differentiated, differentials. Vivinna. Then the living entities are their dharma, their nature is that they are having tathashtha dharma. That means they can be devotees of God or they can become demons also. Like they can be part of the material nature. It's because of their uh, tathashtha bhav, means the middle portion there. They are in the middle of the yoga maya and mahamaya. Then uh, the tathashtha constitution implies that living entities are free from prakriti in liberation. Because in marginal position, so the Okay, they become free from prakriti when they are free or in the, in the liberated state. The next point is that the living entities and mental nature are simultaneously identical as well as differentiated from Krishna. So they are one and different from Krishna. Then what is the method to understand our position? That is called Shuddha Bhakti. Pure devotion. You must approach Lord without any other ulterior motive. Just for the Lord's satisfaction, it is do services, then this thing becomes possible to you. And the final, uh, this is known as Krishna Prema, love of God. It is, it is the aim of life. Some of one is the love of God. So these are the 10 topics, and I don't want to go very much into uh, many topics, but simply I will present uh, some important points. The Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came as the best of Acharyas. For example, he taught the Muslims, he has given teachings to the Buddhists also. And he has given teaching to the Vedantists and he attracted in this way uh, so many types of derivative groups. Finally, he gave his teachings to two, pers two main personalities, to Rupa Swami and Sanatana Goswami. They were in Vrindavan. Previously, they were working in Bengal. And Lord said, you don't have to waste time now. Please go to Vrindavan. I have a lot of uh, services for you. Then he empowered Rupa and Sanatana about the nature of devotional tastes and conclusions of all scriptures, Siddhanta. Okay, so now Mahaprabhu has given, from all our Indian traditions, the four main Vaishnava traditions, he extracted two teachings from all of the four, like Ramanuja, Madhva, Vishnu and Nirmar, and found this, and he gave a unity of all the four sampradayas in terms of his philosophy for Achinta Nilamir Karsha. In Mahaprabhu was staying in Jagannath Puri for many years, 18 years continuously. Before that, six years he sometimes stayed there, went to Vrindavan and went to South India. And he did many pastimes. And mainly he he could experience the feelings of Vrindavan, Raja in Jagannath Puri. All his pastimes of Mahaprabhu in Puri are about Vrindavan's bhavas. Experience that, that bhava in the mood of separation. Means to taste them after a long, long time. Then continuing. Nature of dharma, dharma generally people don't understand in India. But dharma means first there is a vastu. What are you talking about? So if you are talking about the living being, then what is his nature? That is the, his dharma. Just like to flow is the nature of water. Similarly, living entity's nature is to serve. He, he wants a servant, master. And ultimately that service must go to Krishna. That is what. So uh, I think I have already discussed, so I don't want to uh, do it again. Okay. Fine. So, the last topic is that Krishna Prema, love of Krishna is very rarely achieved. But through Rupa and Sarasan, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has made the arrangement that anybody who faithfully follows that uh, system of uh, devotional service can achieve this highest form of Dharma. And Mahaprabhu wanted to include everybody. Uh, actually, he came to Jagannath Puri for his own internal purpose also, 
and at the same time in Jagannathpuri there are many sampradayas. In Navadvip when he was staying, they are all his eternal, pers uh, eternal parcels and associates. But when he comes to Puri, then there is king of Puri, there is other you know uh, priests of Puri that are, are there, then there are others, you know, Ramaraja Sampradaya is there. So many Sampradayas came in Puri. So Mahaprabhu can you know uh, impart those in a very wide way. So he travelled to South India, he travelled to all uh, different parts of the eastern part of South India and he expanded this Krishna consciousness in this time. And still today it is said in this age Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the main personality. Even in Orissa sometimes people are approaching Jagannath directly. But when the king of Orissa saw Mahaprabhu, he saw his devotees are not going to Jagannath directly. First they are going to Mahaprabhu and they think they are going to Jagannath. So they were very, he was very surprised to that. King Patapitra was very surprised. And so that is the message. Don't try to approach Krishna or Jagannath directly. Try to approach to his devotees. Then you will really understand what is the love of God. Thank you. We will all invite you to this conference about the brochure. So we encourage all of you to think about these topics and if you can give a talk in this by making and you will learn from that. You can get some opportunity to think about these subjects that will help you in making some spiritual progress. But many scientists are coming. There is a dialogue we are going to have between Vedanta and science. So Vedanta is talking about both matter and life. But science is exclusively only focused on matter. And it avoids the physical part. So we want to highlight that. And uh, we have to express it confidently. You know, the thing, everything has its use. Science has its use. And uh, our ancient scriptures have very great importance in this. is there for our own spiritual objective and to understand and improve the quality of life. So that is necessary. So you think about the topics, some interesting topics, and you are all software engineers, most of you. So think about how this wrong idea that sentient machines, conscious machines, how they are not correct. Try to give some presentation and interact with the scholars in the Kathmandu. It's a nice place you know, in November 23 and 24. We invite you to join. And there are some publications you can book. And uh, it's a gold symbol. It's also an electrical engineer provided from IIT Kharagpur. So if you have any questions about the publications, you can explain. So please have a look at that and take some books and you read and you have our contact details in that brochure. You can interact with us and keep in touch so that you know you proceed further, understand further these topics. working hard, that energy is not yours, that is Krishna's energy. So people think that this is free, this is for me, I can use it. That's why they are suffering. But if you have a service attitude to give that, there is some expenses for your stay 
and bring the program. Just my expenses is there. If you say that I'm a poor man, I cannot give. We will also give you that. You can you can come for free. I'm a poor man. I can give. I we can give that concession for you. But those who have, they can contribute for this process. We are traveling. We are doing activities. We also need help, support for that. You know, actually everything is made for service of Krishna. If you are using it for your own satisfaction, that is a sin. You are doing a sin, actually. That's why pre culture is there now. The person saying, I'll give you electricity free, I'll give you this free. Nothing comes free. You are, you are not a swami, you are a servant. Your, your creation is for serve. You think that you know, free means free. I am the master, everything is free for you. But this is not. You are servant. You, are, you mean to serve. You are not serving directly, at least you are contributing something into the conference by giving a talk, by you know coming and listening. You are listening, this talk you listen, that is a service you did. Sravan is the beginning of the service. Even you ask some question, this is also service. You put some effort with thought, you put some effort to ask a question, that is also a service. You understood something by asking that. Understand? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ah, yes. I think that I have a lot of I I you understand English for that? So that the same <coughs> Krishna is saying you can only do the activity. Right? But the results are not in your hand. Right? You do everything right. But what result will come that you cannot say that it must come like that. It is in the hand of the soul. Like you see, uh, in, in Ames, I read a very nice statement. We prescribe God to you. <laughs> I read that. So they will prescribe, but what is the outcome will come? Even doctors cannot say, that's why they are signing a, a document. That, uh, we are not responsible. What is happened, we are not responsible. They are signing it before it. But they also don't know what is the outcome of that operation. No doctor can guarantee it. Anything you do. You cannot say for sure that is going to happen. There is some percentage of not happening is also involved. Your design you make, you cannot get an exact uh, strength on what force the bridge will collapse. That's why you have some alarms, error, right? That is there like that. So, people they are thinking that they are doing something, thus they deserve some results, right? But doing also, you need some energy which is coming from him only. Ahankara Vimudatma, Vartam I say. How your hand is moving. You think how something you are, you are trying to lift your hand. The thinking is something intangible. You cannot touch it, taste it, anything. But that is moving your hand. It is something inconceivable. Scientists are not able to understand. So there is some achinta sakti is acting. Your brain, your heart, your kidney. You are not controlling those things. Even these whole gigantic planets, how they are moving. Science says that they are moving in such fast, high speed, and their paths are intersecting. Still, they are going on for so many you know, ages. It's a miracle for them how they are not happening anything. In your body, the cells, they are doing precise activity. You know, cell is being told in science, it's like a big city. Uh, in city, there is stations, there is software company, there is education institute. So many things are going on within cell also like that. And in cell, one reaction and other reaction, they don't mix together. There is cell separates them. If they mix together, the unwanted product will come. Such a wonderful, you see, there is a life, what is the inner life of cell. You see in the video? In YouTube, you search inner life of cell. I think Harvard Institute, Harvard University has made that video. So it is uh, that such a beautiful way the molecules are moving. And you are not controlling that. Your cell, if disturbed, your cells are disturbed, you cannot do anything. So who is doing all this thing? Because of our ego, we are thinking we are doing that. Even our activities, we are depending on it. It is told, you are eternal as a soul, and Krishna is supreme. 
he is also eternal. But what is the difference? You are always dependent on him, but he is independent. Man proposes, God disposes. Asamatra Padeji, Tavai Only Jiva can aspire, but what is sanctions? It comes to ତମେ <laughs> <laughs> my son has done wrong to me. He has not given me proper direction. I am suffering that. Because he has no spiritual knowledge, not you have. But if you have spiritual knowledge, you will think that he is not the body. He is soul. How can I give him the right destiny? <coughs> Putra means who can save the parents from the hell called who? That is Putra. So their great science is important. How can I execute that activity? First, you can save yourself and you can save your parents, your brothers, everybody you can do good to them. Now you are saving on the dress body. Somebody drowning, you are lifting the dress. I saved it. But you are lifting only the dress. You are not saved the person. Understand? So you have to understand science of the soul, science of God. And if you are expert in that, then you can do good to everybody. Not only yourself, to everybody. Can. Any other question? Actually, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in his time, he was attracting the best scholars, and the best panditas, and the best, uh, even not only in the Hindu tradition, but in all traditions. And it is said that the people who are intelligent in this age, from all over the world, from all religions, they will recognize that what Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has given, his contribution, that is the highest contribution in religion. So, uh, Mahaprabhu also told uh, that my philosophy, my teachings and my name will travel all over the world. And he told that uh, Indians uh, should not imitate the ways of uh, life of those who are not trained, but they should understand what is this, uh, like, the gift that they are, uh, can get because they are born in this land, which is the land of the great sages, the land of the great scriptures like Bhagavad Gita. And even then, so many great devotees are coming and they are trying to present these things. So, what you can get in India is difficult to find it elsewhere. In the Western world, Socrates was only telling, I exist when he was being given poison because he said that uh, life is eternal. They were so angry on him and they wanted to kill him, so they gave him poison. But still towards the end he told, I, I exist. He never said, I, I, I don't exist. He never said that. Last point also he said, I, I exist. So since then, uh, it became famous because they said, given him poison, so he, he died. He says, uh, man is mortal, so Socrates is man, so Socrates is mortal. So it is like uh, a very a kind of a, you know, very material way to explain the way eternal life. And Western world is all like that. And uh, even the great philosophers like Plato, people don't understand uh, he, when he talked about ideal world, what does idea mean? But really, idea means. Uh, proper concept and proper concept means which has an objective realization. So if you say anything, but if it if it doesn't find any realization, like if you talk about human human life something, 
but it doesn't really happen like that. It is a vague idea. But idea means which is objective, which is true. So we have to search for such concepts uh, which deal with eternal life and satisfaction, and uh, uh, then we can say human life has been. Can we do five minutes? Thank you. Do you like to have joined five minutes, Kishore? Do you like? Okay. Into five minutes, Kishore. Okay. Hey, hold it to a jar. Manu, Kishore, go. So Kishore means you listen from somebody and then you repeat that. It's known as some Kishore. Okay. So this mantra you know, right? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. So you will do that, and you repeat that. Okay, for five minutes. You do that. Mantra meditation. Okay. Jaya Sri Krishna Jaya Tanya Prabhu Nityananda. Sri Krishna Jaya Tanya Prabhu Nityananda. Oh, uh -huh. 
Vyasa has told, Harir Nama, Harir Nama, Harir Nami or Kevala, Kalu, Nasti or Nasti or Nasti or The image of Kali, only Hari name of Lord Hari can save you. So you try to chant this Hari name in the association of the saints. That will help you uh, overcome the attack of Kali in the form of anxiety that you are suffering in the age of Kali. Kali is attacking from the mind. Understand? The anxiety. So chanting this name will help you overcome all misconceptions and you can develop the proper conception about yourself, about the Supreme. So leave to chant in the body association of the saints. Thank you very much.